So our Physics 111 media project is talking about Newton's first law. And just to give a look, quick little introduction, we're gonna do our experiment with the use of different size balls. And what we're gonna do is balance these balls separately and together one on top of the other to find how energy is transferred and whether the motion of the balls is inhibited due to the force of an external force, which in this case would be the ball on top of the other ball. So Newton's first law, just to give a background on what it actually is, Newton's first law basically states that if an object is at rest, it will remain at rest unless acted on by an external force. Similarly, if an object is in motion, it will continue to move in motion unless acted on by an external force. We gave a little diagram here on the right of a soccer ball basically being at rest, and then it is kicked, which is the external force causing it to move. Once the object is in motion, it will continue to move unless acted on by another external force, which in this case is the net, which will cause the soccer ball to stop moving. Our hypothesis is that if a similar mass ball is stacked on top of the ball being dropped, then the bounce height of the ball being dropped will be smaller than if a lower mass ball is stacked on top. To put this into simpler terms, if you stack a volleyball on top of a basketball, the bounce height of the basketball will be lower than if you stack a racquetball on top of the basketball. And the reason for this is because the racquetball has lower mass and therefore the external force of the racquetball is acting less on the basketball. We're gonna play a short set of videos that kind of show this experiment. Here's the first video with the basketball and the racquetball bounce separately to see the heights. Now here's a video of the racquetball being bounced on top of the basketball to see the difference in the height. Three, two, one, go. So as you can visibly tell from the last video, the bounce height of the basketball was lower when the racquetball was stacked on tight. We also included these position versus time graphs which are drawn from the video analyzer to show this. So on the left is the bounce height of just the basketball. Zero is the origin, which is where the ball was bounced from, and then Around negative four feet is the ground, which is how far the, the ball bounces. As you can tell, the ball bounces around negative four feet down and then, bounce, and then bounces back up around three feet. On the other side is the basketball with the racquetball on top. So once again, zero is the origin where the ball is bounced with. It bounces around four feet down, and then when it comes back up, this time instead of going three feet, the bounce is only two feet. So as you can tell, the racquetball acts as an external force in the basketball and reduces the height of the bounce. Now we're gonna do the same experiment with the volleyball instead of the racquetball. Go. Now here's the volleyball on top of the basketball. Go. So once again, you can tell that this time the bounce had the basketball was much, much lower than when the racquetball was on top. We explain it again with these position versus time graphs. So once again, on the left side is the basketball bounce without anything on top. As you can tell, zero is the origin. It bounces around three and a half feet down and comes back up in the bounce around two and a half feet. Now, when you stack the volleyball on top, it bounces around three and a half feet down, but barely goes up 0.5 feet. And the reason for this is because the volleyball has such a high mass, that the external force of the volleyball acting on the basketball causes the bounce height to be much less. This is the last slide, but in, in conclusion, we basically showed through this experiment and Newton's first law that when the basketball is moving and bouncing, it'll continue to bounce unless acted on by an external force. In this case, the external force was either the racquetball or the volleyball. We also further showed that when the external force acting on the object is larger, in this case, the volleyball is larger than the racquetball, the force will have a larger effect on what it is acting on. And in this case, the basketball is what is being acted on.